Thank you for boarding the Good Pod Guy flight GPG 6084. I am so excited to tell you about this podcast that I'm just going to dive straight in. It is grounded with Louis Theroux. He started it in lockdown in 2020 because all of the celebrities were suddenly grounded. So people who used to be too busy to speak to him were available for interview. And that is reflected in the big names that he has got across the two series. People like Helena Bonham Carter, FKA Twigs, Michaela Cole, who is massively celebrated at the moment after writing and starring in I May Destroy You in 2020, which is brilliant if you haven't already watched it. If you don't know who Louis Threw is, then you're definitely not one of the millions of men I scroll past on Hinge who announced that he's their dream dinner party guest. And yes, I am talking about 80% of the app's male population. But if somehow you don't know who he is, I will tell you that he's probably the best and most famous British documentary maker, maybe next to David Attenborough, who is obviously a national treasure and also another Hinge user favourite. Louis made his name tackling massive topics like brothels, neo-Nazis, Scientology, cults, aliens, paedophilia. He literally does not hold back in his documentaries. And in these interviews, he speaks with the celebrities about what's going on at the time of the interview, but also looking back at their past and their careers and talking about personal revelations throughout. Key moments from the series include one in particular, which has been massively publicised, which is when FKA Twigs spoke out about her PTSD following her relationship with Shia LaBeouf. She told Louis Theroux that she felt scared and intimidated and controlled, that she wasn't allowed to look men in the eye during their relationship. And this has sparked a huge conversation and further publicity for victims of domestic abuse. Also, he spoke to Frankie Boyle, who quite shockingly revealed that he wrote his autobiography whilst high on ecstasy. He said he went back to his hotel in Edinburgh, popped an E and was basically trying to find some sort of spark or something that could translate into something really exciting because the reality of his life, he felt, was fairly bleak. Also, Helena Bonham Carter talks about the difficulties of other people's opinions and fame and everything to do with that, which is really insightful and interesting. The one I got most excited about, though, was Sia. And that's because, guys, I have got a Sia story for you. And this this is totally true. So when I was a kid, when I was like 11, my next door neighbor was engaged to Sia and I met her like on a couple of occasions then. And I remember his parents knocking for my parents. He's like, a he was a fully blown adult, but I was like 11 or something, but his parents and my parents were friends. So his parents knocking for my parents saying, did Lauren want to come over? because she was going to be on the show TFI Friday and she had this single out called Waiting For You. So I went and bought the single from R Price, Clapham Junction, and then went over and met her. And she, so I asked her to sign the single and she signed it. And I still have it to this day. It says, Lauren, this is the first CD I've ever signed from Sia. You can tell I'm so hyped about this story. <laughs> I'm literally like so excited to tell you. And also sometimes people would send her clothes that she was supposed to wear on stage, but she couldn't or it didn't feel right or they didn't fit or whatever. And she would give them to me and my sister. So that was really exciting. So aside from like, obviously our long found friendship that started from there, I also just absolutely love her because she's in recovery as am I which I've already mentioned. And I just think that makes her such a soldier. I've got so much time for people who've come through any kind of addiction. Anyway, back to Louis Theroux. He brings his signature gentle, informal, I know nothing about anything approach, but it is far more toned down here than it was in some of his documentaries, like say when he's speaking to Westboro Baptist Church or, you know, interviewing Jimmy Savile. It has an average audience of 3.4 million weekly users, which is flipping huge. And this isn't just your average famous guy speaking to his famous friends. And to be honest, I think we need to implement a one in one out policy on those from now on because there are a lot. But this one feels lighter. It's more like a breath of fresh air. It feels more authentic. Like, for example, when he interviewed fellow journalist John Ronson, he said, there's a little part of me that continues to feel a bit of rivalry and there's some nastiness mixed in with it, which I don't endorse. And I just think... You can't argue with that level of honesty. 
Check it out. Let me know what you think. In the next episode, I show my admiration for Paloma Faith's determination to wind up her ex-boyfriend. And I fall even more deeply in love with Robbie Williams as we look at Fern Cotton's happy place. You can get more info on the show online at www.goodpodguide.com or follow us at Good Pod Guide on Instagram and Twitter.